My name is Sylvester McNutt III. My mission right now is to create conversations around healing, self-love, self-awareness. I believe that once you heal and once you find your purpose, then you create happiness, then you create success. And I believe we are all worthy. I believe that there's power inside of every person. And I believe that life is about choices. And I believe that the power you have can come from you. It can come from external if you're inspired or motivated by, you know, another person. Um, but then I feel like ultimately, no matter what, where, no matter what source you're talking about, whether it's an internal or external, that's going to lead to your choices and your choices create your life. Your, your choices and behavior create your life. So to me, I don't, I don't label myself or really anyone else uh, like my spirituality. I don't really have a name for it. To me, it is my understanding that I have power within, that I can extract power from external. But ultimately, my life comes down to my choices and my behavior. And, and so for my, my spirituality, I guess if I had to describe it in one sentence, it will, it's an accumulation of how you act, how you behave, and how you perceive the world. Yeah, so I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a duality inside of all of us, um, especially as adults, right? Because a lot of us have jobs that we, we're in, but then we have passions that are outside of that job. And so a lot of us have conflict because, you know, you're spending a lot of time taking care of your needs and doing what you have to do to feed yourself and your family. But then you have this this inner conflict because you're not doing things that make you happy. And that's what I was faced with. And so I went to college to learn how to write books and to speak. I knew in high school that I wanted to be an author and a, and a professional speaker. And so when I get out of college, you know, beggars can't be choosers. You, you take what you can get. And so I took the jobs I can get to make sure that I, you know, I wasn't homeless. And, you know, I just took the jobs I can get to sharpen my skills and learn and just kind of learn how things work when I got out of college. I ended up getting a really, really, really good job uh, working for a corporation doing sales. Uh, it was high pressure sales, but they guaranteed a salary and then they also offer commission. So when I get out of I get out of college, I dive right in, you know, I dive right into it and uh, I just embrace the role. I give everything I can to the role. I'm trying my best. I become a top performer in my company. So as a top performer in your company, typically what they want to do is they want to keep your talent in house and they promoted me. So then I became a manager. So then as management, same thing, top performer. And so what happened is when I came up for promotions as manager, uh, there was a lot of conflict. There was a lot of conflict uh, with me really inside because I was seeing the trajectory of my life. And I knew that if I got the next role, the next, the next position I was going to take as like a 24 or 25 year old, I was going to be making six figures. I was going to be making over a hundred K. And that was always my goal in college was to make sure that I secure a high salary job. I always wanted a high salary job because, you know, I want to just live my lifestyle and just take care of myself. And I don't want to stress about money. I don't want to stress about, you know, living check to check. I never wanted that. And I feel like, I feel like success is a part of your, your, you know, your spiritual journey. I think everybody has a different take on it. Some people say, Oh, you don't need money. Some people will say, you know, money doesn't define you. I'm cool with all of that. And I accept all of that because like I say, life is a duality. So I accept all of that. But if I'm going to have problems in life, I would rather be okay financially. <laughs> I would rather have a job that makes, that makes me uh, comfortable when I come home. That's just my opinion, you know? And so I, I was up for this promotion for this role. It was going to be a six figure role. And that sounds so good on paper. Like, wow, six figures. It sounds great. Especially when you grew up and you didn't really have extra like in my household, we had enough. We never had extra. We, we had just enough. If I wanted extra shoes or extra clothes, like all kids ask their parents for, the answer was no, and it wasn't even negotiable. And so 
growing up like that, I kind of always had it embedded in me that, man, when I become an adult, I'm going to do what I want to do. You know, like, you know how we do that as kids. And so, but it, that was true for me. That always remained true for me. Like I always wanted to create the type of lifestyle that gave me complete mental freedom. I, I never wanted to feel chained and trapped, right? And so I'm interviewing for this next role, high performer, but the culture that I was in didn't really align with me. The way that the way that the new role was gonna have me manipulating myself, manipulating the rules to get sales, manipulating the customers to get I didn't I don't like that. I don't like that. See, I believe that if I'm gonna do business with, with, with you, we're gonna do honest business. I, t I can tell you the price up front. I can tell you what you're going to get up front. I can tell you what I can't do for you. I can tell you what our customer service team can do. And I just, I just feel like as a consumer, the consumer should have all the information. And I feel like consumers want to deal with honest people that they trust and that they, they believe in. You know, if I go in, let's just say an appliance store because my refrigerator stops working and I need to buy a refrigerator from my house. I'm trusting that the person I talk to is going to sell me the best refrigerator, right? Yeah. And so, and I know that's like a silly example, but it's something it's something we can all relate to. We all go through that that stuff. And for me at my core, I always wanted to be I always wanted to do honest business. I always wanted to do business that helped people. I always wanted to do business that that truly made people's lives better. So I'm finding myself in this position where that's no longer the case. I'm not really really helping anyone. I'm making a lot of money, but I'm not really helping. And you know, I'm I'm a Virgo. I'm an empath. I'm a, I believe in community. I believe in adding value to people. And I was in a position. I was in a job that I w was really only adding value to me. And I didn't like that. I didn't like that feeling. I didn't like how that that set with me. It made me feel very, very uh, just. It made me feel like I was money driven. And I feel like if you have a money driven soul, I feel like you're missing all of life. Because money, I mean, what is it? It's like a little piece of paper and it has this like, like we, we give it a definition in our head, but it's not really that real, if you get what I'm saying. And so, yes, yes. and so because I had that conflict at work, I started asking myself, you know, I was like 24 years old at the time. I said, who, who do I really want to be from a career standpoint, right? We spend so much time at our jobs and I asked myself, who, who do I really want to be from a, from a career standpoint? And when I really just sat and asked myself that, the answer came right to me. It wasn't a, a long journey through the woods I had to go through. I figured, <laughs> when I left my, my job and I drove home, it took me like 10 minutes. I figured it out in 10 minutes. And I said that who I wanna be is a person who shares stories, who shares ideas, and who makes money an honest way off of vulnerability, off of strength, off of my passions, which, which is writing and speaking. I have a couple other passions, but I can't make no money from them because I'm not that good at them. Like, I love cooking, but I'm not good enough to cook for people, like, to pay me like that, right? And so, so hold on. So, before you ask me anything, let me just say this, too. That's, that's, that's the one thing that I want a lot of people to realize. Like, when I talk, Free Your Energy is the name of my podcast. It's the name of my eighth book. What I want people to realize, the Free Your Energy movement is not so much about a label, like, okay, you need to become an author. Or you need to become a speaker. It's really not about that at all. And it's not also not like the job. There was really nothing wrong with the job. I could have kept that job. Like both, everything has a benefit. Free your energy means this. I believe that we should enjoy our life. And I believe if you're going to work, which most adults have to work, <laughs> you should do a job that you enjoy. Now, that's not to say, and that's not to be naive, and to say that you're not going to have problems at your job, that you're not going to have conflict, or that there is some job that is just perfect and there's no issues. That's not reality. There will always be issues with every job, every single job. As a matter of fact, I went to go report, record my podcast yesterday, and I broke my microphone as I'm setting everything up. And so... If you do spiritual work, if you do corporate work, if you work with kids, if you're, you know, introvert, extrovert, I don't think any of it matters. I think all that matters is that you're staying true to yourself at that time period when it comes to your career. And you're making sure that you honor your energy and that you put yourself in a position first to grow 
right? And that's what I did when I first got there. I'm like, okay, let me see what this job is all about. And I'm there for four yeah. years. And if I, if I did not do that corporate job, I would not be an entrepreneur. I would not have eight books. I wouldn't be whatever I am now. I wouldn't be it without that experience. The first thing is to understand that there is no such thing as being stuck. There is no such thing as being lost. There is no such thing as I have to figure out my life. You don't. You don't have to figure out your life. You don't have to get unlost. You don't, there is no career. If you're having those type of questions, there's no career that's going to fulfill you. There's no job that's going to fulfill you. There's no partner that's going to fulfill you romantically. What you have to do, all of us, is simply introspect and look within and look at that source within and just simply ask don't make it about money don't make it about title don't make it about prestige don't make it about what your mom or dad wants you to be don't make it about anybody else other than your true self by simply asking what brings me joy what do i like to do and every single adult who sees this or hears this can can say at least three things they like to do now those three things don't mean that they're going to pay you, but those three things mean you need to be doing them daily. The job doesn't have to be uh, your, pur your purpose in life. Your purpose in life can be to enjoy life and just to be happy. We have, we have bought into this idea that one, we can only find our purpose from our jobs and that two, we can't find purpose outside of the jobs. And that's not true. There's so many people who find purpose as being a parent, as being a brother, as being a sister, as being a part of their, their church or their community. So I would just say, you gotta ask yourself, what really brings you clarity? What brings you enjoyment? What brings you happiness? And if you can't answer that, that's fine. That simply means that it's time for you to explore what this world has to offer. Because there's other states that are different than yours. There's other cities that are different than yours. There's other countries, cultures that are different than yours. So if you don't know what you want to do, it's possible that you haven't been exposed to enough. And that this time period of your life, you just need to figure out what else is going on in the world. And so you just got to honor yourself and open yourself up to what's going on in the world. Right. We know this much. Right. Like I can sit here and tell you I'm a best selling author, eight books and I got a pack. I No matter what title and accomplishments I give you, I know this much. Right. And there's so much that I don't know. So for me, I have to always stay open to what I don't know, the experiences that I don't have. And that's what I think a person should do. Introspect. Okay, what three or four things do I really like doing? Okay, you like doing those four things? Do them, do them as often as you can. Even if it's, if it's your job, cool. If it's not your job, find time to do it. Make the time to do it. If you have a great job at the post office, but you love to, to do yoga and to sew and to play tennis and to swim, well then work your job, appreciate your job, and then Monday through Thursday, it sounds like you need to dedicate each one of those nights to those four activities you love. You know, building a life that you love. It's not like you just said. It can literally be like finding your passion, we make it we make it so grandiose. It can be the smallest things. It can be like I, for me, I love to cook. I'm never going to make a dollar off of the, 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 the stuff I cook. Never. I'm never going to get followers on social media from what I cook. No one's ever going to praise me for what I cook. Right? But that's all external. You know? That's all external. And that's what people got to understand. You just got you to go within. You got to do it for you. You have to do it because you want to. Not because whatever they're telling you out there.